All right, here we start. Here's plants I bought for a Steam River Launch St. Andrews. That's what it's supposed to be, and it was in the picture of it in the site that I bought the drawings, but this is the drawings I got for a ship. Now, let me show you what the ship looks like. Now, these plans are for a 36 inch model. This is the back going long, going long. Has a smokestack going up. This is the top deck. All the way up to the front of the ship. This is down along the hull. All of these other, a lot of these lines are, are representing the sides of it. And this is what it looks like in back. Now, what you get in the drawing is actually a set of drawings depicting the shape of the hull. Now, what it is on on the right is the ribs you're going to cut, starting at the, the very smallest one at the front for the front of the ship, and going back around halfway. And then on the other side of the same drawings, we have the half of the ribs in the back of the ship. That's that is now. Draw marked with the locations on it. Now the next we have is a top view of the ship. Here we go along the ship. This gives you a detail of what half the port side of the ship looks like. The starboard would be the same if you're making it a full ship from both sides. Now, two things. This is these plans are 36 inches long, but actually, I want to make a 72 inch long ship. So I have to blow these plans up double. Now, I'm only when I make this, and I'm going to show you the video one as I go along making the hull and everything else, I'm only going to make half the ship because it's going to be mounted up on a ceiling up on a wall. So, what this first video is is an example of showing you how I blew these plans up. Now, it's a little hard to tell, but I took this whole drawing and I cut it up into sections. There's, I think it's around 3 inches or so on by 11 inches. And I cut all of these drawings, this whole drawing up into those sizes. And then what it is is I put them in a scan you can even see all the way along here. You can see the, the shiny, and that's where the tape is. That's where the tape is, where I taped this back together again. But I cut this whole drawing into roughly three and a half by, by 11 inch sizes, pieces. Actually, I think it was 10, three and a half by 10. And the reason for that is so then I can take those cut pieces and put them in a scanner and I scan the piece. Then after I cut this all up, scanned all the pieces and saved all those files, I went ahead and I taped, taped all of these pieces back together again so I have my drawing again so I, I know what this thing is going to look like. So like I say, that's the first step. You buy the drawing, the size you want, you cut it up, and you scan the pieces. Now, I'm going to double this drawing from 36 to 72. I want the boat to be 72 inches long. In the past, I've done it with other plants where I'd, I'd get plants for an 18 inch model, and I really wanted something. I like something usually around 30 inches, I like a little bigger model. So I take that 18 inch plants and do basically the same thing too. All right, I'm gonna show you next. I'm gonna tape uh, and show you what it looked like all taped back together again. But before I show you that tape, I'm gonna go ahead and tape 
Before I show you that drawing, uh, I'm going to splice in and I'll show you on the computer how I blow up the separate pieces. All right. All right, this is what I use to enlarge my photos. This is Corel Photo House 2. Got it on my computer. Now, like I say, the, the first step of this is I cut the pieces down around 3.5 by 10, and I scanned all the pieces. Scan them all, put them all in a folder. So now and then loaded it all on my computer. Next, I'm going to go up here to the top, click on open, and what it is, I go to desktop, and in desktop I have a, 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 a folder with boat plans. Now I got, there's one for boat 36 inches. Now, this is, by number-wise, the first thing that it's scanned. Double-click on that. Come out here, I go, I go full screen. And I got this section of the scan, if you notice. This is the propeller back and part of the rudder. Now, what I want to do is it's, I want to go ahead and, and I straightened it up already. If you can see the the line here, right here, the line, how it's at an angle. What it is, when I scanned it, it didn't scan straight up and down. So what it is, is up on top, this little spot that says view. No. Little spot that says image. You can go down and click on custom rotation. And what it'll do is, It'll, and then it click on custom. And what it is, is it'll let you turn the whole page so that the scan is straight up and down. And you click right here, you can see, you can do different numbers. Now I'm going to go back to zero because it's all right. But you click it and you adjust your picture so it's straight up and down. And then you click on the done. Now, I got this image that's roughly three and a half by ten. I want my printer paper is eight by fourteen is what I'm using. So what I do is click over in a little box right up there. And it's like a little box. I take it over to my drawing and I highlight come on let me do this again I come over and I highlight half of the drawing now one little trick is I found, you want to go in here and this bottom cutoff, I want it right in between the lines. So when I scan this one and have that page printed out, and then I'm going to scan this lower half, I have some reference to line these two up. So right through some letters, they will line it up. Lining it up the other way, I have the straight line on the drawing. So what it is, I click it there. Next, I click on Edit. I click on copy, click on edit again, say on paste, and I click on new document. Now I got a whole new document here. Now, next thing I want to do is under. Now, this says this little section of drawing I have measures three points. All right. <clears throat> For this first drawing, it shows that that it's 5.67 inches tall. With my little handy calculator, I found that I got to double that, and double that is 
11.34. So I put 11.34 in, hit done. That enlarges this drawing to that size. That drawing now is 11.34 inches and I've doubled the size. Then I can save it and print it out. Then I came down and I copied this lower section, making sure that I went through the letters so I'll know how to line this up. And I'll do the same thing. I go over to Edit, go down to Copy, go back up to Edit, go down to Paste, as new document. Now this new document, I go into, click under Edit, Image Properties, and then this one is 4.49. So, 4.49 times 2 equals 8.98. I put in 8.98. Click on the bottom of done. And this drawing now is double the size with that section of the drawing. And I go back up the file, save as. Uh, now I got one A. I come over here and I'll call this one B. Save. Okay. Now one little hint that I, I found out that would help a lot when you're doing this is before you save this drawing, go down to A right there. And it'll allow you to come up right here, right there. And I could put a B right there. So then I know, and what it is on the other drawing, I would have put an A. So I know A goes with B. I know those two drawings go together then. And so what it is, is those would be, those two drawings would be the first drawings I'll cut together. Now I'll show you a paste up of these two. I'll print out these two. And I'll show you what the pasting looks like. Now it might seem like a lot. I mean, there were, here, let me show These are all of the parts that I had scanned. And I don't know, out of those are one, two, three, four, five, times one, two, three, four, five, twenty-five, twenty-seven scans. Now, one little secret. Some of the scans, when I had scanned it, and gone ahead and, and try to blow it up, the size was funny. So some of these scans I had to divide up into even four images. Say this image. And what it is is I might find that it was too big to print out just in half and half. Somewhere like that. I, do, I don't know why. Then I had to divide it up for some reason in a quarter, another quarter, another quarter, and then take those four and paste them together. All right, let me show you. Again, I'm ready to print. I put eight and a half by 14 sheets of paper in my printer. I click on print, but I got to make sure I got the right size paper in that. So I come down here. And that uh, portraits and all of that. But then I hit advanced. And I got a little box that says paper size. And it says letter. I'm actually legal size paper. Eight and a half by 14. I say okay. 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 And it goes to print. I close this one down. And this is my other one. Now I go back up to Parent, Properties, Advanced, and it says Letter. I want to change the letter to Legal. Say OK. 
I hit OK, and I say OK. They're both printed. Next, I'll show you what I ended up doing, taping them together. All right, here's my two printed out pages. Like I say, they, they fit on the page. Now, what I'm going to do, I could cut either side here. So what it is is, well, I'll take this one. I'm going to cut right along where well, it stopped printing and cut right along there. And then I'll show you what happens. Now, take the one page, lay it over the other, line it up so you can see the, the end and shingle and the prop. There's a little R part I got lined up. And then my vertical lines line up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape, tape it right across. Got a piece of tape lying across. So this is one drawing now. Actually what I'll do too is flip it over and I'd put another piece across here. Then I'd, I'd collect, print out all my different pages. And then watching at the drawing I could see how they lined up. Now the A didn't, I didn't print out the one with the A there where I put the A there. But it would help if you do it. It would help if actually before you cut, found if you cut this all down, if you put a little coat on each one of these so you can figure out which one goes to which. Now next, what I'd probably do is cut along this line, take these next set of drawings, tape them up there, and then match this to that next set. Match up all of the lines where it goes and all that, and then tape it. And continue it like a puzzle. Tape this all back together again, and then I would get a set of drawings, a set of drawings that is twice the size. Now, keep this in mind. You can use the Corel photo if you want to go the other way. Say I wanted to make that 36 inch boat only 20 inches long. Well, I could have reduced all of this stuff rather than scanning it all, doing the whole thing, but rather than doubling each one of the images, I could have cut the images in half and then taped it together. Then I would have had a, a smaller boat plants. This, uh, this I find is a, is a cool way. This is how I, I blow up everything that I want to do. A lot of taping, and you use a lot of tape and all that and a lot of paper, but it's a nice easy way of blowing things and changing the sizes of things. All right, the next video I'm going to be making is going to go ahead and it's going to be, I'll show you how I cut out and set up the ribbing on a board and then a continuation of that will be gluing on the sides to the ribbing, how I got to clamp it on, glue that on, a little bit about how I put all the ribbing together. I figure this is going to go over around four videos because I can only put like an hour on a video. So to give you a nice detail of it, probably be like four videos. All right, like I say, I'm going to post this one and this will be the start of my model boat, six foot model boat video. Uh, thanks for watching. Well, you can go on to the next videos after. Thank you. All right. Now, after I, I blew the pieces up, the pages up, I blew it up on eight and a half by 14 inches is the sheets I use so I could get more of the height in it, uh, in the things. I took all of them pieces, pages, and I matched them up. You can see here a little bit where it didn't quite match up right. But I matched them all up to all of the other pieces that I had cut out. And I cut some of the paper along the side. And I then I taped this all back together again. So what I ended up with was a full size of what I wanted for a finished boat. Uh, like I say, this the width of the boat went from around 7 inches up to like 14 inches. This is going to stick out from the wall a good little bit. Alright, so this is the one. Let me show you the next. Alright, now this is the 6 foot blow up. 
of just the top deck, what the top deck will look like. Now, the drawing is six foot long. I can use all the dimensions on it and scale the, the pieces on that I need. Now, what I'll do is on a lot of this stuff, say even like this shape here. For me to get that design, I'll go ahead and put tracing paper underneath it and put a, the piece of wood underneath it or a template underneath that I can, and then I can run over this with a pencil and then take the carbon paper and a piece of wood out and I'll have that shaped in to the size that I want it. But this shows the size of everything that I got to make. Using this one, it's a better example of how I, what I did with all of this when I was done. Now, this is the full scale of the ribbing, size of the ribbing. And what I would do is, actually I made the ribbing for the boat out of three quarter inch plywood. So what it is, is I'd have a piece of three quarter inch plywood under the drawings with a piece of carbon paper on top. Then I'd go ahead and with a pencil, Mark the outer shape of the one rib. I'd mark it. This one's number three. I'd mark it and then take it off, carbon paper, and cut that piece of plywood. Then I would do the same thing with, with the number uh, two rib, the one and a half, and then finally the number one. And then I did the same thing with the ribs on the other side. But that's how I would use this to make the ribs. I put the carbon paper underneath, plywood underneath that, and trace it. Now this is the six foot. This just shows the side view of the hull. I use this and I do the same thing. Uh, like the rudder, I use one eighth aluminum. Put a piece of aluminum underneath it with carbon paper. Trace the outer shape of it, took it, cut it out. Uh, did the same thing for this right here is the ribbing that runs all the way under the ship. All the way up to the front. I traced that all out with carbon paper underneath it on a piece of quarter inch plywood and I copied that shape. Now you can see I can get all of the detail off of here the same size, double the size that it was at before. Uh, like I said, these big bells from the top, I'll take that, I'll, I'll, I'll trace that with a piece of wood up underneath it, and then uh, cut that out, and then I can go shaping from here. But I can make everything to this size. Now the funny thing about this boat, from the company I bought it from, the plants, the St. Andrews, the picture they have for the St. Andrews is not this boat. We ordered the St. Andrews, which is supposed to be a river barge, and this is the boat I got. But it was sort of different enough, you know, that we're going to go with it. So I started already before I really got into the other, and the wife said she's all right. So these are the plants. I take just the side view of it in one drawing, the looking down in another drawing, and, and the hull configuration in another drawing. I'm going to show you this as I go along, but I'm